Hi there, in this video clip today I want to talk about three uh, things, purity, formulations and chromatography. Let's look at the first one, purity. If something is pure, it's got a definite freezing point, melting point or boiling point. It means it freezes at X degrees. It d doesn't freeze at between minus five and plus two degrees it's a definite fixed point for example water h2o boils its boiling point is a hundred degrees centigrade full stop its freezing point is zero degrees centigrade full stop how do you know if something's impure? It's because its boiling point, melting point, etc. is not a, a fixed point. For example, why do you think they add salt, common salt, to water? It's to lower its freezing point, which means it's got to be colder than zero degrees centigrade for the water to form into ice. Let's look at formulations. Is a mixture of compounds, a mixture of different chemicals. Let's look at some typical formulations we know about. Food, and then we've got, say, fuel, and we've got fertilizers. I know, I can't spell it. Fer fertilizers. Still doesn't look. Right, medicines, medicines, must be blind, medicines and paints. These are not pure compounds, what they do is they add additives, different chemicals, different compounds, and why do you do that? They add other ingredients to change their properties to give us the desired properties of the product. For example, you look on the label of some food packaging and you get all sorts of things. Rather than if you took a tin of beans, it doesn't just contain beans means Heinz, beans in a tomato sauce. It's got antioxidants, colorants, preservatives uh, and all sorts of things. I think when I looked at a tin of beans it contains about 20 different things. Water, sugars, polysaccharides, monosaccharides, antioxidants and all sorts of things. Fuel. The petrol you get is not a pure thing. It's got a lubricant in Cider, anti-knocking agent, lead tetra, ethyl, maybe they dose it now with ethanol, cheapens the product. Fertilisers, they f add stabilisers so it stays still good. Maybe they fiddle and add extra nitrogen, phosphorus and uh, potassium to increase or adjust the NPK values. Medicines, that's the classic. They add stabilizers, uh, antioxidants and all sorts of things. Paints, they are drying agents, anti-drying agents. They fiddle with the solvents and the water content and the pigment content like blue dark blue this shade of blue that shade of red pink etc formulations in which they modify the properties by adding other things and the third thing i wanted to talk about is chromatography chromatography is a technique used to separate substances in a compound and this is a simple setup. There's three uh, types. There's paper chromatography, thin layer chromatography, and gas liquid chromatography. 
and the principle is this. Substances move at different speeds in a solvent. For example, if I took paper chromatography, paper chromatography, you've got, <coughs> would you believe this, paper, and if it's put inside a container that contains a solvent, I'm going to mark a line there, you put your, I'm going to change this a little bit, right, this is the solvent and I put my substance on there, what happens is the solvent advances up there, up that paper and Maybe that's where it ends up at. That's the solvent front. That's where it starts off and the solvent front moves up there. And you get a mixture being of those spots are of different substances. That is paper chromatography. The next type of chromatography is thin layer chromatography. It's exactly the same but this time that is a glass plate and it's been covered in silica gel it's a very fine powder and there's the baseline and there is my solvent tank I'm gonna mark it there so you can see a bit more clear and what happens is the substances travel up with the solvent front and eventually maybe the solvent front gets to that position and that has been separated into two or three components. If I took that <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, that blue uh, pen or that red pen, I'd find in fact I'd get a series of spots on the chromatogram because it contains more than one substance. And in the case of the third type of chromatography, gas liquid chromatography, it is a long column. It's a very long column column and it contains silica beads hello beads and this time maybe you in that column is full of the beads you inject it with a sample and it's the mobile phase like the solvent front it's not a solvent front this time it's something like an inert gas helium for example by the way that's what they use for the breath analyzer if you've been on the uh, saucer and they take you in for a sample and this could be your urine or blood they mix it with a gas and it's then injected into a GLC machine. It's something like, these days it's called something like line, online intoximeter or, or whatever it is. But <clears throat> I want to look at an actual example. Different substances have different RF values and that stands for retention factor. Let's look at the paper chromatograph. There's the piece of paper. It's put into a tank which contains a solvent and here is the bottom of the piece of paper. And I'm going to draw this so you understand exactly what I'm saying. There's the solvent. 
And what I'm going to do is I mark a line on there. And if I take substance X, there it is. The solvent advances onto the paper and carries on. And eventually, you can see it gets wetter, it gets damper, and there's the solvent from how far it's got. So the solvent goes onto the paper, hits the spot, that substance, and eventually it is partitioned in the solvent front and you get a spot for it there. And there's two things you need to know why you do that, because different substances have different RF values, different retention factors, and let's calculate the RF value. Suppose that that solvent front there has moved 10 centimetres. It's moved 10 centimetres from here to there. And the substance itself has moved from there, from here to there. And suppose that distance is 8 centimetres. The RF value is the distance moved by the substance which is 8, divide by the solvent front, which moved 10. So the RF value is 0.8. Easy, eh? Suppose, suppose, this is my pure substance, and this is another pure substance and that is another pure substance I'm gonna mark it let's move that reference point reference point reference point and this is a another pure substance and suppose I've got a sample that gives me the following spots that one and that one from that chromatograph, chromatogram, I know that that substance, the unknown, contains a bit of that and a bit of that. And that's all I want to say. Chromatography, a means of identification of individual constituents of a mixture and used to separate mixtures. That's all folks.